Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about something that you guys really requested in my last Q&A video, which is all of my tips and tricks for solo traveling and specifically solo traveling in Japan. If you are new here, I have actually been to Japan five times now. And on my most recent trip, I went on my own. I actually filmed every day of the trip. So if you guys are interested in checking out the vlogs, I will leave the links in the description down below. So let's Let's get on to my experience solo traveling in Japan. I get a lot of questions from you guys on how I save for my trips and whether I feel safe when I solo travel, so I'm going to touch on all of these topics in today's video. First of all, let's talk about why I wanted to go to Japan alone. Like I mentioned earlier, I have been to Japan five times and the first four times I always traveled with others. My very first trip I went on a study exchange with my school and stayed with a host family. My second trip I went with my family, then I went with my boyfriend friend and then my best friend and then finally on my own. So after four trips of going with others, I definitely had a sense of I was going to all of the same places in Japan because it was always someone else's first time when I went to Japan. So I was constantly doing all of the top touristy things every time I went, which don't get me wrong, I love all of those places too, but you know, when you've seen them a few times, you've, you've seen them a few times. <laughs> so for my most recent trip, I really wanted to go alone so I could really plan out my own itinerary and have a bit more freedom to just kind of do whatever I felt like doing on any given day. Plus, I really wanted to feel that sense of independence traveling. Traveling alone is very different to traveling with others. You literally have to rely on yourself and only yourself. But as challenging as it can be sometimes, it is such a good experience. If you ever get the opportunity to travel solo, I highly recommend it. You really do learn so much about yourself, as cliched as that sounds, but just being able to rely on yourself really gives you a sense of confidence that you bring back when you come home. And the freedom is just really good. So let's talk about budgeting and what it's like as a solo traveler. There are definitely aspects of traveling to Japan which are more expensive if you are going alone. The biggest one being accommodation. Whether you stay at a hotel or a Japanese inn or an Airbnb, if you are going alone, you still have to pay the full price of the room. This is where staying with others, it definitely becomes a lot cheaper because you can literally split the room cost. But when you are alone, they don't care how many people are in the room. If you book the room, you pay the price for it. There are more affordable options in terms of accommodation. You can book business Airbnbs. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're called, but they are Airbnbs specifically for people traveling on business. The rooms are a bit smaller, but the prices are better. You can also stay in a shared Airbnb. I haven't actually done this myself, but it's something I would like to do one day, but it's just where you stay in one room of a host's apartment or house. So of course that will save money as well. There are also some accommodation options which are unique to Japan, like capsule hotels. They would be a bit cheaper because you literally just rent out one capsule for yourself. If you're unfamiliar with what a capsule hotel is, it's almost like a hostel, except instead of having bedrooms, you have a, I guess, like a, a pod that you sleep in that acts as your bedroom. And then there are common bathrooms and storage locations for all of your belongings. So on my last solo trip, I decided to stay in an Airbnb and I ended up booking out the entire apartment. And that definitely was not cost effective, <laughs> but I did really love staying there. So it just kind of depends on what kind of accommodation you are looking for within your budget. A lot of people ask me whether it feels lonely traveling alone. And I think it really depends on whether you're more introverted or whether you're more extroverted. I'm probably more on the introverted side, so I don't necessarily feel lonely. I really do enjoy the time that I have on my own, but I do still really like hanging out with others as well. <laughs> My solo trip actually worked out really well because about half the time I was spending it with friends and the other half I was spending it on my own. One of my best friends, Yuma, lives in Japan. She is Japanese and so we spent a lot of time together. Plus I made a bunch of new friends as well when I went to the YouTube Hanami that Kira in Tokyo invited me to. So I still had a lot of opportunity to talk with others and, you know, just make friends. If you are doing a solo trip to Japan and you do feel a little bit nervous about being on your own, I highly recommend booking in Airbnb experiences. Not sponsored, I just did a few on my last trip and I really enjoyed them. <laughs> Airbnb experiences are when locals host, I guess, experiences or activities that travelers can join in on and then you can meet and make friends with the people who are also doing the experience with you. So I did two experiences when I went to Tokyo on my last trip. The first one was a countryside hike around the town that inspired my neighbor Totoro. Oh, it was gorgeous. And there was around eight or 10 or so others 
that were on the tour with me so we got to chat as well and then the second one was a cooking class where I learned how to make bento boxes with a, another guy in my class so if you don't plan on being alone for every single day of your trip I highly recommend booking in at one of those experiences if you guys are interested in either of the ones that I did I'll leave their links in the description below for you another question I get asked a lot is on safety so of course while you're traveling solo you have to be a bit more careful because you're the only one available to watch your back but what I found solo traveling to Japan even just traveling in general to Japan Japan is a pretty safe country to visit I would often walk from Shibuya station to my Airbnb 20 minutes away late at night and I very rarely felt unsafe Tokyo at least is a city that really doesn't ever sleep and so there's usually always people around but of course you do need to be sensible I find that walking anywhere confidently like I know where I'm going even if I don't is often a really good strategy but in general my experience walking around alone at night in Japan has been pretty good one really great website if you are local to Australia and I'm sure that there are equivalents for the country that you live in is smart traveler I believe it's a government-run website where basically Basically, if you are traveling from Australia to another country you just put in all your details like where you're traveling to for what period of time you're traveling to and any emergency contacts so that way if anything bad happens in the country that you are staying in your emergency contact will be told by a smart traveler so at least they're aware of where you are and what's going on another important one is book travel insurance this is an important one regardless of whether you are traveling solo or not I cannot stress this enough if anything happens to you or your luggage or your accommodation insurance will help you out so much I think it's especially important if you are traveling alone that way you kind of have a bit of a buffer if anything bad does happen I mean some people think that oh I book travel insurance and then I never have to use it it's just a waste of money you never know when you will need it on my last trip I actually had a dental issue and I had to go to the dentist in Japan to get it cleared up and if I didn't have have travel insurance then I would have had to fork it all out from my own pocket I think when you are traveling solo it just removes one layer of stress if anything bad happens at least you can contact your insurance company and they can help you out with what to do next like if I didn't have insurance when I had that dental problem I would have had no freaking clue what to do <laughs> but while we are on the topic of stress it is definitely stressful when you travel alone and that's purely because you don't have anyone else to sort of comfort you or talk through issues with you you just pretty much internalize all of your stress and nerves because there's no one else to talk to I remember being on the flight over to Tokyo and I was freaking out as to whether I would manage to get on the right train and I wouldn't end up in some random place what if I didn't find my Airbnb and then I don't have accommodation and I'm homeless for the first night like all of these things you really do just have to rely on yourself and it's 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 a bit terrifying sometimes one thing I found that really helps me is planning out every little detail from between landing at the airport to getting to the Airbnb and I mean planning things like what time does my flight arrive at the airport downloading the map of the airport so I know how to get through customs where to go pick up my pocket Wi-Fi where the train station is I probably look at three different trains that I could take from the airport until the next big train station just so I know that if I miss the first one then I know what time the second one is if I miss the second one then I know what time to catch the third one <laughs> another great thing to plan for is that if you don't get your pocket Wi-Fi or you haven't organized a sim card or Wi-Fi by the time you get to the airport make sure before you fly that you print out every single document that you need that includes your flight details the train timetable your Airbnb guide if you are staying at an Airbnb or a physical map if you are going to a hotel it is pretty rare for taxi drivers to speak English so if you have to resort to catching a taxi to the train station or to your Airbnb having the address in Japanese of your Airbnb or your hotel will be so super super helpful and I know that we live in a digital world but I have been a bit on the bum before by not having things printed out two trips ago I went to Kyoto with my best friend Jess I vlogged that one too if you're interested I'll leave it in the description below but we didn't activate our sim cards at the airport like we should have we actually made it all the way from Osaka Airport to Kyoto Station and then Kyoto Station to our Airbnb to realize that Neither one of us knew the code to the lockbox with the key to our Airbnb because it was in an email that we didn't print out. 
out. <laughs> then we had to grab our suitcases, get back in a taxi, go back to Kyoto Station, and then find like McDonald's just to use their Wi Fi in order to access our emails to get the lockbox code. Moral of the story print it out. <laughs> So let's talk about eating meals out while traveling alone because I know that in Western countries, at least in Australia, it's a little bit weird if you go to a restaurant to eat by yourself, but in Japan, it is actually very normal. While convenience store food in Japan is famous for being amazing, please don't just resort to going to your local kombini and getting dinner and eating it at your accommodation. I highly recommend getting out and just going to restaurants and experiencing eating there alone. It's actually great. You don't have to share your dessert with anybody. Some are really great restaurants you can try that cater to solo travelers is Genki Sushi in Shibuya. It's a sushi train and there is a large communal area around the outside of the restaurant where they pretty much just sit singles. It's great. <laughs> Another great one is Ichiran Ramen. It's a ramen franchise restaurant which actually went viral a few years ago for being the ramen shop for introverts. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that it's introverted per se to want to eat by yourself but there are heaps of Ichiran ramens all around Tokyo, but basically you just order your food via a vending machine and you get little meal tickets and then you get seated in your own individual booth. You can take down the walls if you are eating with somebody else, but if you're alone, you just put your barriers up and then you enjoy your little booth and eat your ramen. It's great. They are just two examples, but in Japan, it is very common to dine alone. A lot of people in the workforce tend to work very long hours. And so it's pretty common for them to go out and get their dinner on their own. Japan also has a really high singles rate, which is a whole other issue entirely, but that does mean that plenty of restaurants cater for solo diners. For those of you wondering how to take nice photos while you're solo traveling that aren't just selfies. If you've ever been traveling and you've had to ask strangers to take photos for you and then you've gone and looked back at the photo and you're like, that's a terrible photo. <laughs> We've all been there. Then I have some tips for you as well. The first one is using self timer on your phone. Most smartphones these days should have a self timer function where you can just turn it on, put your phone somewhere and then go back, do a little pose and then it will take the photo for you in about 10 seconds or so. So that's a really good one if you are in a crowded area with people who will walk past your camera. But my favorite way to take photos while I'm traveling is actually to use the camera that I am filming on right now. I use a Canon G7X Mark II camera to do all of my vlogging and take all of my pictures. But there are other cameras that have the same function as well, that basically there is a Wi-Fi link between my camera and my phone. All I do is I put my camera on my tripod and it's not like an obnoxious thing. It's only about yay big, it's really small. And then I just put it somewhere and then I connect it up to my phone. And then on my phone screen, I can see what my camera can see. So I can, you know, get in position and make sure the light's okay. And then I can take the photo by tapping the button on my phone. Took a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but I took a bunch of photos this way. I'll put them on the screen for you guys. And I think they turned out pretty well. So I have a one more tip when it comes to solo traveling in Japan, and it is to make use of the singles line at Disneyland. I feel like not that many people know about this, but Disneyland and Disney Sea in Tokyo both have a bunch of rides that have a singles line, which is basically for people who are traveling alone or just want to go on the ride by themselves without their friends or family. And the line is so much shorter. Most of the rides at Disneyland and Disney Sea seat you in pairs. So if you're traveling in a group with an odd number, there will always be a free seat. So to keep the lines moving quickly, they just want to fill the ride. So if you are traveling alone, you can go up the singles line and they'll just put you in that empty seat. It is literally the difference between waiting two hours in line and waiting 15 minutes in line. So if you're planning on going to Tokyo Disneyland or Tokyo Disney Sea, keep an eye out for those singles lines because they will save you a heck load of time. So that is pretty much it for my tips on solo traveling to Japan. If there's anything you want more information on or you have a question that I didn't address in this video, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. If any of you are planning a solo trip to Japan anytime soon, I hope you have an amazing time. I absolutely loved my trip, so I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.